If you're like me, one of your financial objectives is to achieve financial independence. Financial independence happens when you've saved enough to support your current living and investing habits for the remainder of your life without really having to work again if you choose. Sounds pretty great, right? So welcome to Lucid Luxury once again. Before we continue, please take a brief moment, go down and smash that like button. And if you have not subscribed to our channel yet, what are you waiting for? Please do so. Today, I will tell you about the 10 self-improvement tips to achieve your financial independence in the right way. Number one, decide you want it more than you are afraid of it. One of the reasons more people don't hit financial independence is because they're anxious. Not financially independent, but changes in their lives they'll need to make to get there. If you're new to the financial planning process, it's critical to remember you don't have to go from zero to 60 overnight. To become financially independent, you'll have to have a genuine heart-to-heart -heart conversation with yourself. You need to induce a few things clear in your head, including a definition of precisely what financial independence implies to you. Following someone else's definition won't get you there. A practical picture of your current financial situation. A practical thought as to what you'll need to give up to get where you need to go. A realistic evaluation of the obstacles in your path. A series of objectives that will assist you in becoming financially free. Number 2. Create a series of steps. Getting to be financially independent isn't a single goal, but a series of sub-goals, typically because your financial life has a few aspects. To reach your overall objective of financial independence, you'll need to set up goals in the different zones of your financial life, including increasing your income, controlling your investing habits, paying off your understudy credit or credit card debt, understanding your investment fund patterns, determining your venture objectives, defining your long-term budgetary goals, purchasing the most excellent life protections for your family, and implementing a legacy plan for your heirs. You will have to go over each of these categories in a few details, but it's important you create a list comparing each category's goals. That will guarantee you're moving your whole budgetary situation forward instead of trying to do it one category at a time. Number 3. Commit now that you will live beneath your means for the rest of your life. If I need to choose one step out of this list 10, that's more vital than the rest, it's this one. That is because no other steps you take will be possible unless you completely commit to mastering this one. It must be the single step that will give you the most out of your saved cash you will need to achieve most of the other steps. Learning to live beneath your means is one of the best costs of learning how to end up financially independent. If you have not aced this strategy in the past, doing so will extend anywhere from uncomfortable to downright painful. Setting goals is the primary step into turning imperceptibility into the visible. Number 4. Block out the spendthrifts in your life Are there people in your social circle who you may sensibly characterize as a spendthrift? If yes, one of the sacrifices you may have to make to reach financial independence will either decrease your contact with this person or eliminate them from your life altogether. I know that doesn't sound kind, but it is essential. The people we keep in our company can have a significant impact on how we see and spend money. If you're surrounded by people who live for the moment, meaning they generally spend their cash having fun instead of sparing for the longer term, you may get pulled into that behavior. Number 5. Always keep your career or business moving forward In step 3, I said that living beneath your means is the simple, most imperative step on this list, and that's genuine. But you can deliver yourself a major help in that exertion by making sure you consistently increment your income in the future. If you'll relentlessly increment your pay, whereas keeping your spending level, you'll reach all of your financial objectives much more rapidly. You'll keep your career moving forward by keeping your work abilities sharp and expanding your value to your employer. You should put yourself in the running for advancements where possible and hold yourself open for superior openings with other bosses. If you're self-employed, it implies relentlessly working to keep your business moving up and to another level. Number 6. Always save money no matter what your income is 
Do not be one of those individuals who say, I'll begin saving cash when. The issue with telling yourself that is when never comes. The much better position, when is now? When is it always? You should continuously be saving cash no matter what's happening. It's one of the very best procedures to make sure you are continuously moving forward. In case you do not have sufficient room in your budget to spare cash now, at that point, the answer is to increase your salary, lower your costs, or both. As John Maxwell says, you'll never alter your life until you change something that you are doing every day. The mystery of our victory is found in your everyday routine. Never let excuses stand in the way of sparing cash. It's a long-term objective that begins today and never stops. Number 7. Create a safety net if you have been living paycheck to paycheck up to this point, your first investment fund's objective should be to make a safety net. You can do that by creating crisis finance. Your emergency fund should be held in a flawlessly safe account, like an investment funds account, cash market account, or a short-term certification of deposit. It's not for investment since investment involves a risk, and that's not the reason for an emergency fund. Your first objective should be to accumulate up to construct up an adequate amount of cash in the account to cover 30 days worth of living costs. Once that's accomplished, your goal should include another 30 days worth of living costs. The account should have almost between 3 months and 6 months of living costs if you're a salaried worker and 6 to 12 months if you've got a self-employed job or paid entirely by commissions. Number 8. Invest everything above that. Once your emergency fund is stocked enough, you can begin thinking about contributing your cash. Usually important because investing is around utilizing your cash to gain more cash. The bigger your investment portfolio becomes, the closer you get to financial independence. Ideally, your efforts to spare cash should never moderate down once you have built your emergency fund. Instead, increment your endeavors to support your investment accounts. That should be simpler to do once you have got an emergency fund in place. Number 9. Invest no matter what the market is doing. In hindsight, it is self-evident that there have been way better times to invest than others. But since no one knows what the long haul holds, you can't know when that will be in the future. Plan to invest no matter where the market is going. If you're occasionally investing, you will be a dollar cost averaging into the market, which can minimize the risk that you are taking should the market decrease. In case you are doing feel it's an awful time to invest, at that point, come back on how much you're investing in values. But at the same time, continue collecting cash and fixed wage investments in your portfolio. That way it'll be there to purchase when the timing looks a little more favorable. Number 10. Diversify your investments. It gets back to not knowing what the markets will do in the future. The perfect way, the perfect way to ensure yourself against unexpected shocks is to expand your investment over a few diverse resource classes. Big picture, you should have a sufficient amount of cash invested stocks, settled salary investments, peer-to-peer -peer loaning, cash, natural assets, and real domain. That will keep you from taking a huge hit in any event of those sector crashes, whereas at the same time taking advantage of solid markets wherever they may be. Becoming financially independent isn't simple. That's why you wish a detailed plan and a commitment to stick to it. Use this list as a guide and alter it to fit your situation. You'll get there as long as you do not give up. Now, if you enjoyed the video and felt like it was valuable in teaching you how to build more wealth into your life, share it with your friends or anyone else who might benefit from information before we wrap up. And make sure you leave a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you want to change your future. Take action and take action right now. Thanks for watching.